due in about five days, and that's creating ongoing headaches for people who are out of work or unable to get their unemployment benefits. At the same time, the moratorium on evictions in the city of Seattle and the state of Washington will expire a week from tomorrow, June 4th. Como Suzanne Fon joins us live with a close look at what this all means for renters. Suzanne? Well, across Washington state right now, more than a million people are renting. And here in Seattle, the average cost of rent is $2,169. During the COVID-19 crisis, many people say they just can't afford to pay rent. Erwin Bure lives here in Capitol Hill. The chef is out of work and hasn't paid rent in two months. My rent is $1,500. So right now I owe $3,000. I think there should be some rent relief for people in need. There's a lot of people struggling to pay rent right now. They don't have no jobs no more. They can't pay it. They not working, they don't have the money. Madeline Pollan works in the hospitality industry and has been out of work. It is pretty scary, but luckily our landlord has even been supportive. You know, let us know if you need to skip a month or pay it off later. Not everyone is so lucky, and that's why some advocacy groups like Washington Low Income Housing Alliance is trying to get Governor Inslee to extend the current moratorium on evictions, which expires June 4th, for another 90 days. They have an online petition going. We really need to protect renters all over Washington state. Rent eats first. People need to pay their rent in order to keep a roof over their heads. The city of Seattle also has a moratorium on evictions that's set to expire on June 4th. Today, the mayor's office responded saying that the city of Seattle has also made major investments in rental assistance programs. The city has set aside $4 million in programs to keep Seattle residents from losing their housing. The city has also invested $1 million in the United Way Home Base Program to offer rental assistance for thousands of needy families in King County. Trump is once again criticizing mail-in voting. In a series of tweets, he claimed that it will lead to massive corruption and fraud ahead of the November election. His criticism comes as more states look to expand mail-in voting to help prevent in-person contact at the polls because of coronavirus concerns. Camo Steve McCarran has new analysis on the president's tweets. It is an extraordinarily safe, secure system. And it's also the most cost-efficient way of doing it. Como political analyst Ron Dotsauer is a fan of mail-in voting, a system that's been in place in Washington for years now. He was pleased to see Twitter add fact-check labels to two of the president's tweets, spreading unsubstantiated claims about widespread mail-in voting fraud. But it was absolutely the right thing for them to do because there's nothing more sacred, in my opinion, than, than voting. Secretary of State Kim Wyman says Washington's system is not perfect, but she's seen no widespread fraud. We balance access and security really well. So things like voter suppression and voter fraud in our state have a history of being very low. She points to an audit earlier this month as a recent example. It showed out of more than 3.1 million votes cast in the 2018 general election, there were 142 cases of suspected improper voting. That's a potential fraud rate of four thousandths of one percent. Is it widespread fraud? No. To this day, she tells me she's still getting calls from other states scrambling to come up with alternatives to in-person voting. King County is two, roughly a dozen calls so far focused on procedures and vendors being used. There's so much more opportunity for risk in conducting polling place elections than there is for vote by mail. Because there's more people handling the ballots more often than there is the vote by mail. Don Sauer believes the president's recent tweets about the issue come down to politics and the arguments aren't likely to work in his favor. I think this is an area he needs to quietly move away from. Steve McCarran, come on news. Being accused of a hate crime, threatening and yelling racial slurs at an Asian couple in Ballard. Today, a local judge said David Altamare is a threat to the public. Camus Jonathan Cho has more on what happened in Altamare's first court appearance. Yeah, Altamare was arrested for malicious harassment, which is a felony, but now his troubling past is also being scrutinized. Who knows what might have happened. David Altamare waived his right to appear at his bail hearing. The prosecutor urged the judge to keep him behind bars. So the state is concerned that if released, the defendant presents a substantial danger of committing uh, further acts like this. The 28-year-old was arrested Tuesday in the Ballard neighborhood. He's accused of yelling an Asian slur at a couple, chasing them down the street, and telling them he wanted to kill Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Are these allegations true? No. I spoke to his family members in Bellevue. 
His sister told me he has a history of mental illness. There's a lot of things going on right now, and what we have to say is that we suffer sometimes with some just mental breakdowns. I have my personally can say I've had numerous ones myself. Altamare also has a criminal history. In 2009, authorities say he attacked someone with a rock. In 2017, authorities charged him with harassment, malicious mischief, and trespassing. But public records show he took a plea deal in mental health court and completed treatment this past February. No contact with the victims in this case. Because of this pattern of behavior, the judge agreed he is a threat to the public. I am going to set the bail in the amount of $50,000. The Seattle Police Department is also investigating several other anti-Asian bias incidents in the Ballard neighborhood. The man in this photo, who has not been identified, is a suspect. And it's unclear if Altamare is connected to any of these cases.